All right, tell you about uh, Little Miami Schools in Lakota next, 700 WLW. All right, so Lori Quinlivan is going to be on with Willie today at 12.06 to explain why the city that sings should be the new slogan for the city of Cincinnati. 12.06 today on 700 WLW. All right, Little Miami Schools, they passed their levy last year, so you got the buses that are uh, going to start rolling soon. Some of the other things, some of the other services probably take a little bit longer. They, uh, they were in fiscal emergency, according to the state, and they passed that 13.95 mil five-year operating levy. The average homeowner of a $100,000 home will pay an additional $427 a year. That is staggering. Not sure they, they quite get it here. I was, I was shocked that they end up passing theirs. I did not support it. I will not support any of them. Rich Hoffman from No Lakota Levy certainly knows that. But you guys got some goodwill going. People oh, coming together in Lakota, hugs every, and kisses. Everybody's holding hands and the Kumbaya. birds are singing in the middle of the winter. And, and yeah, it's all wonderful. And, and they had a good meeting the other night. And, uh, well, that's nice to hear. They, they have a new president, you know, because, you know, we had, there was a lot of controversy last mm-hmm. year. So they made some changes. And uh, they're putting on a good face. Yeah, because uh, Ben Dibble, the uh, Lakota Board of Education president, had this say. He said, "Let's acknowledge that the school board could be part of the reason that our levy failures of our levy failures during the last couple of years. The school board has projected an image of divisiveness that we weren't always willing uh, to work towards the goal of providing the best possible education at the mm-hmm. lowest cost. So, yeah, yeah he's, I would say you're right. They were a little bit divisive in that, but within that, Rich, there seems to be another little message there." Well, you know, they put the the person that was running or part of the campaign push for these tax levies. She's now the vice president, so you can see right out of the gate they're looking to pose for a, another tax increase, which you know just means we have to go fight this thing again uh, for the fourth time. Yeah, because he said. Let's acknowledge that they could be the reason of our levy failures. Okay, great. But then the rest of it, it says they weren't providing the best possible education, uh, the goal yeah. of providing the best. So what he's essentially saying is yep. those levy failures were a bad thing. Right. We're still well, not getting the message it, that exactly. there's some other angles here. That's, the, that's where the failure is here. And I think the divisiveness that, that he's talking about was caused because the board disagreed on how to bring the cost down. It was because the pressure was there's not money. We're not giving them more money to to go and do all the things they want to do. Um, you know, so the board was divisive over how to handle that. So he's trying to unite the board under a common cause of basically getting behind another levy push. And they certainly didn't learn their lesson, and they are definitely not respecting the eighteen thousand some voters who turned it away for three times. So essentially, he's putting a good face on it. Mm-hmm. And still supporting the levy, saying those failures yep. were the wrong thing. I mean, they're taking some some blame from the board, but he's still saying those failures were the wrong thing. In fact, he went on to say, I ask my fellow board members to leave behind the ways we've done things in the past and take a new approach. Things the same old way will lead, doing things the same old way will lead us da- down the same path that has resulted in three levy failures. So what he's saying is they want to put a good face on it, a new marketing, lets everybody feel mm-hmm. good. So... Yep. They won't have levy failures in yeah, the future. That's exactly what they're saying. Huh. And, and that's what, and that's what you saw what happened in Little Miami, and they just kept pushing up the ninth time. That's the only plan they have. We've joked about it here. Mm-hmm. We've had great fun with it. But it's really kind of a sad commentary that that's the only plan there is. So we really, this body of government is, is absolutely uh, toothless. All they know to do is ask for levies and campaign for levies. Now, you saw the, the documents I sent you about mm-hmm. how much money they spend just to maintain their image. Uh, you know, they, they, they have consultations from public relations officials on how they go to the bathroom. And, uh, and they, it costs, you know, $90 then, it costs $60 an hour now is what it's costing to advise them on how to talk to everybody in the media so they can put on a good face. They're very image conscious, but not very uh, money conscious on how to keep things within a budget. If he was really serious about the part, he said providing the best possible education at the lowest cost. Mm-hmm then he would not continue to discuss the idea of the levy failures being a failure because it is clear, Rich. <laughs> exactly. Ba- based on the money they have wasted on searches for people that were right yeah. up the road, for superintendent, as you said, for image consultants, mm-hmm. for some of the other ridiculous ways that they have spent money in Lakota in every school district in America, 
uh, he would try to find the best possible education at a lower cost in other ways. Oh, yeah. There's so many ways they could do that. I mean, we just, we talked just a few weeks ago about the $90,000 payout they they had to to fork out to pay off a contract, which that has been a real debacle. And you add all that stuff up, and it comes out to a really, really tremendous cost that they're asking taxpayers to fork out. And they're, they're hoping that if they can just keep everybody peaceful and, and, and show a united front that people will vote their way and not ask the hard questions. And they certainly haven't talked about taking the cost reductions of 5% to live within the budget. That hasn't even been put on the table. And it's, you know, what, two, three months since the election. Let me, uh, let me help out here, Rich. And I'll go ahead and say this for every administrator and uh, members of school boards and people who continue to push the levies. I mean, let me, let me just lay it out to make it real simple for them here. Number one, um, people like me, Rich, uh, other people who do not support a lot of levies, uh, it's not that we don't care about education and children. It's on the contrary. We want efficient education. We want the best one at the best price, and we have not gotten that for a long time. We recognize that money, throwing money at the problem, is not the answer. So... We do not believe that simply passing levies is the answer. We want you to find other ways Mm. to fund schools, to make them the best schools possible. And we've laid out the numbers before that schools that that don't spend as much as some school district often have a better success rate when it comes to graduation and also rating when it comes to the different rating agencies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm I'm with you 100 percent on that. You know, Lakota, our our tax rate uh, per hundred thousand dollars is one thousand one hundred forty dollars, and that doesn't matter if it's commercial business or a resident or residential business. It's not that we're not paying money and we're not paying taxes. You're to already support paying the schools. It. We're already paying and quite a, quite a hefty amount. This is at a point where you, it's just it's a matter they have to do what we all do, and they have to live within a budget. And, and because they said yes to these contracts to these unions, they. Um, that's not our problem that they didn't manage those contracts that they buckled and and didn't you know do the diligence to keep things under control uh we're telling them to do that now and before you ever go to a, to the public you should really go to the to union and at least say let them tell you no so they're so they can be the bad guys and not the school board ben but, ben dibble's comments though rich uh, it, it is the perfect illustration of how uh, we've joked about them having blinders on and they only see <laughs> one thing this shows you his comments show all they know yeah. is the levies were a failure, and that was their only plan. The only success they could have with budgeting for school is to pass a levy. That's all it is in there. So th- what they've done is they've pulled back now and said, well, we need to find a way by putting a better image on it and doing what we can. They're starting early. So do you suspect that they will be floating another levy this year? I think they're going to try for one in the summer when everyone's on vacation and, and some of the the older folks that don't have kids in the district are on vacations. Uh, I think they're going to target a summer levy. I think they're they're looking at it. Uh, I think that worked for the, the the superintendent. She tried that up in Pickerington, where they had an August election where nobody oh, really showed up. That's so, her. That's her. Uh, her track record. Her yeah. Plan. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they're 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 definitely gearing this up so they can get their their base. You know, they have sixteen thousand people who you know have kids in the school and you know they don't want to have to. You know, they they want. You know all the things that the the school offers, and they they hope to get that back by voting yes. They're hoping those people show up, and the no votes are all on vacation, you know, during the summer. And so I think they're looking for a summer release and try to try to do something a little bit different to get the numbers in their way. They're certainly not looking to to solve the problem, which is, uh, you know, they're just over budget by five percent, and it's not that hard to bring it in. It's just a matter of asking some of your higher your higher people that are you know when you have an average wage of sixty three thousand dollars, it's not too much to ask them to take a little bit of a hit, like everybody else has, to, to live within the budget the community set through these votes. Well, Rich, I'll tell you what, I don't care. I mean, you know, they could, maybe she'll be successful if she floats this idea of a uh, summer uh, levy. Maybe they'll try, maybe they will in the fall, whatever. They may keep trying, and at some point they may be <laughs> successful. But I will tell you this, I will fight with you. I will fight against you, with people, against them. I will do everything I can to stop every levy. For every school levy from passing, and it's not because I don't like education, it's because I recognize we continue to throw money away because nobody has come up with good new ideas and a new direction for education in America for, for the future. I will fight everyone. Rich, if you need me to march, if you need to, me to come out and about, I will do it, not just for Lakota, but for every school district. Well, I'm glad to hear that because it's a lonely road on this thing. And, and I would say to this, uh, if you really, if you love education, if you really want what's best for your kid, that you have to bring this whole yes. piece down and, re, and and it has to be reinvented and reconceived. And you can't just put an image on it and try and sell that. 
with multi-million dollar budgets. You have to fix it at the ground level and make it really work. Rich, and, I, I'm looking out over, over 71 right now, and you know, a, a rainy day in the tri-state, and I see all the people. I see the trucks driving mm-hmm. by and the truckers out there yep. who are trying to make a living. And I see all the cars going back and forth, people on their way to work or, or taking care of business. That is the reason I'm talking about the education, because it comes out of their pocket, mm-hmm. and they don't get anything more. No. They do not gain anything. They don't even maintain a good quality education. Education is failing in America. And I'm standing up for those people that are working right now. Yeah. Let's come up with new plans, and I will gladly support it. Even if it costs us a little money in the short term, let's come up with some new plans. But all I hear from people like Ben Dibble is, well, we had le- uh, levy failures in the past, and uh, we hope not to in the future, essentially. As long as you put a star on your paper, you right. everybody's happy. <laughs> All right, Rich Lakota, you, uh, Rich uh, Hoffman from North Dakota Levy, keep me posted, okay? All right, man. Thanks, buddy. It's Doc Thompson on 700 WLW. Doc Thompson at 700 WLW. Just got uh, a couple of emails, people explaining to me what's going on in their districts, and it's the same stuff. Somebody just said, Doc, you see what's going on in Monroe. They're going to they're gonna fill me in on some of the things that uh, maybe isn't uh, the most known, that a lot of people may not know. They're going to be sending me an email on that, and I'll share with you in the coming couple of days, what I can. You know, this is the same every school district. I'm just looking for some new ideas, and I've thrown out some new ideas. It's very simple. We start changing education to a, an off-campus, uh, take a lot of classes online, make it all available, transparent in that, and the, po- the powers that be that fight against it, the school boards and the administrators are people that just don't want to lose control, and they don't want to lose the amount of money they're making. That's, that's what it comes down to. I don't, I don't want to see people lose jobs, but we cannot continue on the path that we're on. It's, it's just not sustainable. It's not a good path. Education in general in America is slipping, and we keep pouring more and more money at it. And if you're driving to work today, I'm tired of you being taken advantage of. More and more property taxes simply because you want to have a nice home. And they're saying we need more and more because they are not making enough money. The solution is use technology to our advantage, redesign The education system in America, no, we don't have control over all of it, but we can certainly start in the tri-state, right? We can start in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Lay out the new plan. Some of the process have already been started. Let's just move towards it instead of you and I just saying, well, the school board says we need more money. Hey, do you like that Barry Larkin? Are you happy he's getting into the Hall of Fame? Are you ready for the announcement today at 5 o'clock, the big press conference? Well, Barry is in town, and I want you to talk to him. What message do you have for him? I'm going to get to your calls coming up at 11.06 right after the news on 700 WLW, home of the Reds. This is a special podcast presentation from 700 WLW.com. This is Doc Thompson On Demand. On Monday, I talked about Sydney Spies. That's the, the high school girl who's 18 years of age who submitted as her pictures for her yearbook. Some things that some consider too racy. So the school yearbook staff said, nope, we're not going to put those in there. And it started this big brouhaha. Well, this morning she was uh, she was on the TV there, and she said the yearbook staff originally voted 4-1 to one that she could be in the yearbook. And the principal met, principal met with them, and suddenly they changed their minds. Now, the principal in the schools, they're saying, no, no, it was just the yearbook staff. If that is the case, how low? How low for a principal to not stand up and say, here it is, this is what really happened, and blame the yearbook staff. (laughs) That's pretty low. And if you're the principal, if you're an administrator, you stand up and you say, this is how it is. I mean, you got to make those decisions. But if you're still interested in it and you have not seen the photos, check out Cindy Spy's photos on my blog at 700wlw.com. I have two of the photos posted, and then there's a link where you could see a whole lot more. Appropriate or not? Steve Olsher joins me now. Steve, wanted to have you on to talk about college and whether or not it's a really good investment. I don't know if you saw the story out of uh, D.C. where they want to mandate that every kid apply to college. You know, <laughs> i got to tell you, all I can do is laugh because as you, uh, as you know, uh, you know, Doc, i got to tell you, man, there's, there's no worse investment that a parent can make than putting their kid in college directly out of high school. And for us to spend 
public funds on teaching children how to apply to school just continually perpetuates this educational myth that our money, time, and effort is best spent figuring out how to get that piece of paper, which is ostensibly worthless in today's marketplace. That's a really good point that, that you're right. Resources, it's not just saying, okay, kids, you all have to apply as a requisite, a requirement of, of graduating. They will end up putting resources towards it, maybe even teach some classes. And I say, how about teaching them the fundamentals, <laughs> you know, the things that you well, need? Doc, Doc, where, where, where am I wrong here? When, when did we get off? I mean, wasn't school always, well, at least when I grew up, school was about learning how to read and write. At least those were the two basic fundamentals. Yeah. So where, did, where, where did we fall off the wagon that we now have to teach people how to read an application and write? In the answers, where, where, where did we go wrong here? You know what, Steve, my dad, when I was little, he said, when, when I was learning to read, he said, reading is the most important skill you can learn in school because if you can read, you can teach yourself everything else because you can read books and whatever. Of course, he still wanted those other things learned too, but you're right, that's the cornerstone, and we don't do that anymore, Steve. No, and i got to tell you, from my perspective, what, what really irks me is that when you take a look at what we're actually teaching our children, no one's teaching our children how to live. They would be more, I mean, it's like it's hands down. Let's teach people to, to stop thinking about coming out of school and, and getting a job, because a job is just your juncture of bankruptcy. I mean, that's all it is, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we have to start doing is figuring out how to teach people to cultivate a career. And again, before we start getting the hate mail and all the calls, I'm not against college. Don't get me wrong. Just the statistics show otherwise. We're 87 percent of those who graduate from school with a four-year degree do not work in their field of study within five years. And worse, 50 percent, 5-0 of those who graduate from school work in a job that did not require a four-year degree to begin with. So if you know you want to be an architect, you know you want to be an engineer or something of that nature, great. Go to school, do what you got to do, and get that piece of paper because you're going to need it. But if you've got no clue what to do, as opposed to, you know, saying, hey, let's teach these kids how to, how to go ahead and fill out an application and apply to school, let's put them in a workshop. Because they're talking about a day-long workshop. Let's put them in a workshop where they can really begin to understand who they are, what it is that they're compelled to do, and what their interests are so that they can go out into the world, explore some of those interests, explore different people, different opportunities, and then, you know, maybe when they're 19, 20, 21, 22, then they can have a better feel for who they are and apply to school and maybe go pursue a career that they're absolutely interested in. But to put these 17, 18, 19-year-old kids in a four-year school, I mean, it's really just asking for, for a, a return on investment. That means that they're coming back home. I mean, that's the only return you're going to get. So you said within five years a after graduating from college, 87% of the people are in a different field, and 50% of them are in a field that they didn't need that four-year degree anyway. Yeah, the numbers are staggering. And that's to, that's and incredible. To, and it, it is. And when you couple that with the fact that the average annual salary right now, the average annual salary is around $30,000, and the average student loan debt hovers around $20,000. I mean, you're talking about, let's just assume you can put away 5% a year. You're talking about 12 and a half years before you get out from beneath the debt for, 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 for uh, I mean, you're talking about paying off debt related to a job and, and an education that you're not using anyway. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's going to be the next, be the next bubble, Doc, I'm telling you. You had you the tech, tech bubble, you had the housing bubble. The next bubble, I promise you, is going to be college loans. This I, I think happen. you're right, because if you look at the numbers, too, um, I've seen some statistics recently that in some areas, college tuition has gone up, the, the rate of inflation, you know, or, or the way they're inflating it, has gone up faster than health care costs. Oh, man, and, and you've got to look at who's perpetuating this educational myth. It's the government, because every time they loan out a dollar, they make about four points on that, lo on that dollar. And then to boot, look at what the average annual salary is for a Division I dean. They're making $250,000 a year as the average annual salary on a Division I dean. Of course the schools are telling you you need that piece of paper, but uh, Jim Rohn said it best. And what he said is a formal education will make you a living. A self-education will make you a fortune. 
And it's so true. We have to get these kids clear and our, and our young adults and even our adults, for that matter, on what their what is. I mean, that's the question. You know, what is your what? What is that one thing that you're absolutely compelled to do? And once you can answer that question, everything else falls into place, Doc. Talking with Steve Ulsher, his book is Journey to You, a step-by-step step step guide to becoming who you were born to be. I think, I think you're right. If you look at the number of... Uh, of deans and what they make. It's not just the salary. They get other compensation, often cars. They get their health insurance taken care of. Many of them get houses to live in. All of these things, the professors often are making very good livings. I've gone down the list, Steve, in different states, including Ohio. And if you look at what the highest paid government worker is in those states, you would think, okay, uh, maybe the governor, he'd be at the top. You'd have some state doctors and that. No, no. Often they are 20, 30 down the line behind college deans and professors. Mm. You know, and i got to tell you, again, I, and I don't want the, the hate mail to start running in here. I mean, the, the college does make sense, and certainly there's value sure. in, in having that education. But we spend, the, the educational system is inherently flawed because we spend 60 to 70 percent of our time, our energy, and our resources on these general education courses. When you look at the way it was structured before, we needed to give them that well-rounded education so that they could then figure out what it is that they wanted to major in. So 20 or 30 or 40 percent of your class, you know, your coursework was dancing somewhere around that subject. But the fact of the matter is it's so backwards. Why don't we put our kids out in the world, let them intern, let them apprentice, let them go volunteer, let them go work for a nonprofit. Oh, my God, like, like you have them get a job. I mean, you know, let's do something so they can understand what it is they want to do, how they can do it, and how they can best affect this world, and then go pursue the education that supports those objectives. And frankly, Doc, there's a lot more opportunity out there to learn nowadays than there's ever been, and a four-year school isn't always the best place to get the education you might need. I mean, let's say you want to start an Internet business. Scott isn't going to teach you that. No, you're, you're just going to get in debt twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and still have to go out and learn that someplace. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and, you're, uh, when, when you talk about yeah. what your what is in your book, and I think you're right, um, it's not that college is bad. You find out what your what is, and then you say, what is the path that, path that will lead me to that? If I want to be a brain surgeon, I'm going to need schooling, and then I'm going to need the schooling afterwards, and I'm going to need the residency and everything else, and that makes sense. But if I've decided I want to be a waiter, I enjoy working with people, I enjoy serving them food, I like what I do, then you know what? That is not your path. Your path right. is not college in that case. And, and, and you know what you did? Probably you went to school and you got a major in art history and a minor in pre-unemployment. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? In today's world, one of the best ways to become a waiter is to go to college, right? You know, and, and I gotta say, I'm not trying to make light of the subject because there are people here who are buried. I know plenty. I mean, literally about a half dozen people right now that have over a hundred thousand dollars in school loan debt and are in jobs that, frankly, they just didn't need the the, the college for any or or their graduates. Some people with graduate degrees, you know, are still waiting tables. So I mean, you know, it's just it's just the nature of the beast right now. But ultimately, and I, of course, I encourage your 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 listeners to go to journeytoyou.com and grab a free copy of the book, because I do give the book away for free, because I wholeheartedly believe that if you can become clear on what it is that you're compelled to do, and you go out and you pursue that with reckless, reckless abandon, you're going to make this world a better place, which ultimately makes my world a better place, which is why I give the book away for free at journeytoyou.com. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly what we have to start doing here, man, is get people on path, get people on purpose, and recognize that there are plenty of alternatives out there. I think uh, part of that starts with with redeciding what education is going to be during the the uh, the secondary years as well. Well, even in elementary school and junior high, I mean, is yeah. saying how are we? What are we really putting kids on a path to do? It seems to me right now, Steve, like college has become the the default, and we do that because it's easy. Although it's difficult, you know, to, to have kids make sure their grades are up and all of that stuff. It's still an easy pathway. It's the default to say when you're done with high school, you're going to go to college. It's like kicking the can down the road. We're not really addressing what you want to be, what your future is going to be, how you're going to achieve that. We don't make them set goals. We don't don't do any of those things. We just say, let's have you go to grade 13 so we don't have to think about it. Yeah, I mean, Doc, look, it's a social experiment gone wrong. I mean, let, let's, let, let's admit that, because ultimately, instead of being at home and getting the bottle from your mama, all you're doing is going to school and learning how to get the bottle from the bartender. I mean, for the most part, that's what happens, and, it's right, and you're just so right. 
we're just we're focused on the wrong things. And I got to tell you, the way the shift is coming because more and more people are saying, you know what, it's just not worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I see a lot of people out there. And it, it, it always frustrates me, too, to have people then, like you said, just say, well, I'm not going to college because it's a waste, blah, blah, blah. No, no, that's not that's not it. I mean, first of all, it's never a waste to learn. Good for you. It may be a waste for you right now to say if you want to do something that does not require college as a career path to spend that money. You, you have to put it into perspective. But I just saw some interesting numbers uh, that U.S. teens right now are having a difficult time finding part-time jobs because they're competing with displaced older workers for those part-time jobs that used to be for kids. Well, those displaced older workers likely went to school, had made good money. Some of them still have student loans, and now they're they're taking up the part-time jobs. Yeah, and I got to tell you, they're more qualified than the teenager. I mean, yeah. you, gotta, you know, you, you could have a retired executive flipping burgers because, well, that's what it's come down to. And the reality is that they may be able to work their way up through the system. And there's been plenty of folks who started out flipping, you know, flipping burgers and making fries and ended up owning a, a chain of fast food restaurants. So you never know what can happen. Hey, have you ever seen the numbers? And I'm going from uh, an interview I did a long time ago. The numbers on the, fran- the McDonald's franchisees who used to work for McDonald's, I'm, I'm talking flipping fries or, or flipping yeah. burgers and making fries that, you know, not talking started off as a manager that became franchisees. I think the number is somewhere over 75%. I mean, it's incredible. They have, and, and you know, people make light and make fun of, of some of those opportunities. But, you know, if you like feeding people and, and seeing people happy and, 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 you know, eating on the cheap and, you know, hopefully not having to run to the bathroom every six minutes, I mean, look, there's, you know, there's, there's definitely opportunities out there in all sorts of different fields. And the nice thing about the McDonald's Corporation is they are very, very good about giving people opportunity once you get your foot in the door. Yeah, and that's you don't see as much of that nowadays as maybe you used to in the past. All right, well, Steve, I think uh, your book is fascinating, A Journey to You, a step-by-step guide to becoming who you were born to be. You got uh, great stuff and great ideas, I think, on, on putting college and the price of college into perspective for people. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Zach. Have a great day. Have a great day. And I'll put a link to his stuff on my blog at 700WLW.com. And I'm all about helping you get a job. You want to know where the jobs are? I tell you about them when we, uh, when we get them. Told you about the new jobs yesterday that are coming to Mason over the next five years where the company's expanding. And now you got some jobs that are coming to Union Township. Jungle Gyms is expanding. Probably knew that, right? Well, they are going to start taking applications there very soon. If, if you want information on Jungle Gyms, well, first of all, on their current location uh, or their new location, as they start looking for those applications, you can get an application on my, on my blog. Just go to 700WLW.com. I got a link to all the information and a place you can download the application because they're going to have to fill that place. And you know how big Jungle Gyms is. That's a lot of workers. Give you some more details coming up at about 11.33. It's Doc Thompson on 700 WLW. Fox 19 Storm Tracker forecast for meteorologist Frank Marzullo. Rain tonight and, to, uh, and through uh, tomorrow morning. Then it changes over to sm- snow tomorrow midday and afternoon. So enjoy the rain. It could be worse. It could be tomorrow. It's 41 now at 700 WLW. I, just, I hate the idea that college has become the default setting that when you graduate high school, you simply go to college. I I just dislike that. Learning is a wonderful thing. I think all of us should always continue to learn whatever it is. I mean, that's part of being human, continuing to grow. But saying I'm just going to go to college for the career and saying that all or most people must do this as the default, I think that's a very bad situation. I think Steve's right. I think that's a bubble that's getting ready to bust. Got Scott on a cell phone. You're on 700 WLW. Hey, Doc. I just wanted to call up and say thank you. I totally agree with your message. Um, College isn't necessarily right for everyone, but learning is always a good thing. Um, I actually got my degree in business and marketing and all that, but I found in the last year with the state of the economy, it's not very predictable. No. and Did you have to take a bunch of debt? Uh, yeah, about. I mean, I went to the private school too, so even Uh-oh. more, about forty thousand. Um, but you know, you, in today's economy, you just can't rely on that. And I actually reached out to a local business owner um, about learning a trade. 
You know, you see right there, Scott, I think you just touched on something, too. It's that you can't count on it. It's, again, even if you're doing it for a career path, which, again, is it can be very successful. It can certainly help you. It's a good thing. And you'll likely make more than, than people who don't. But you're right. In today's world, you can't guarantee, okay, I got my degree. I graduate. Now I'm going to go out and start making money. That may not happen. Exactly, because you're one of 500 applicants. That, so, that all have the same qualifications. Exactly. So... I decided I can't put my keep putting my family through it. I reached out to a local owner, and for the past three, four months, I've been getting on-the-job training, learning a trade that I'm going to have the rest of my life. And, you know, I was the guy who, whenever a technician came to my house, I walked, stood over his shoulder. And, honestly, I'm kicking myself that I didn't do this 10 years ago. And I could have saved myself 40000 so... Well, you know what, though? Maybe this, uh, maybe the two of them will combine. You know, maybe you learn that trade and eventually you, uh, you use the business side of it. You're an owner, whatever. So, yeah. you know, maybe it could still help you out. But you're right. You, you, you've, got some, you've got multiple sets of skills now. Yes. But I just want to say thank you because you're exactly right. Well, Scott, God I, bless you. I hope you uh, continue to do well. You know, just, just stay in there. Keep hammering away. And and good things will come. I really believe that. We do have some more job news and some positive things. If you're looking for that job, I've got something to share with you. About 11.33 this morning. 700 WLW. Doc Thompson at 700 WLW. Talking about uh, schools and college. So how are local schools doing now? We had those levies that uh, some schools, a lot more than I thought, would pass in the fall. So how are the schools doing? Let me give you an update on that in just a second. But I want to get to a quick call here. Eddie in Fairfield, how are you? Hi, Doc. It's funny you bring up that conversation about uh, just going to college for something to do. My 15- and 17-year-old both uh, just uh, maybe six, seven months ago were saying that all the kids at school just don't know what they're going to do after school, but now we'll probably just go to college. So uh, I've forced them to take Spanish. You know, I let them pick any class they want, but I get to pick one, and one is because I feel in the workforce they're really going to need it. And the second thing I've done is kind of forced them to go to St. Rita's and take three classes of sign language to separate them from the job pool. When the employer says, okay, I have 20 people want the job, why should I hire you? Well, one, I'm fluent in Spanish, and two, I'm fluent in sign language. Is one of the ways I'm trying, you know, as a parent, to try to separate my kids from the back. I think that's wonderful. I think, I think uh, uh, Spanish, number one, and I think Chinese, if you can – I mean, those are still – um, those are still kind of rare. There's not a lot of people that, that Americans that speak that second language of one of those two, which are huge in the world right now. Um, so you I say think sign language was a, was a bad idea then? No, no, not at all. First of all, I mean, they'll end up using that or, or be able to uh, use that potentially some places, but definitely the Spanish, I think Spanish and Chinese, the first, the, the, the two main ones, they're, uh, Spanish, Chinese, English, the, the biggest languages in the world. So if they can okay. do both, there's going to be a lot. And, and, you know, we do more and more business with China and, and Spanish-speaking countries as well. I think it's wonderful. But it's interesting. You said that um, they said, well, I'll probably just go to college. Yes, that's their biggest topic is not knowing what they want to do, not, a, not an elective, not a tech school, not a trade of anything. It's just, well, you know, I don't really know what I want to do in 10th or 11th grade, so I'll probably just go to college. See, that's what I mean. That's become the default. I mean, it shouldn't be the default. It should be, in, in fact, when I was in school, it was still, um, you know, kind of difficult. Well, I, I, I hope to get into college. Will I be able to go to college? You know, I aspire to be a lawyer or something, so I need to get into college or work. So I go, but now it's, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, guess I'll probably just go to college. Well, with so much financial aid being offered in all different sh- sh- shapes and sizes, I guess, uh, I don't think they even can, the concern is about monetary of how much yeah. it will cost. That they just go because once again, it's not cash out of pocket at this very moment to determine what I definitely want to do. It's pay, learn now, pay later, and then complain to pay later and join Occupy. Listen, a lot of a lot of people, um, and certainly a lot of people that are in their teenage years or twenties, maybe even a greater percentage than than the whole. Are, are are kind of I don't know um, non focused. They're unfocused. They don't they don't have a plan, and we just kind of you know mull about. Well, I guess I'll go do this today, or I guess I'll go to college. Lots of people in college still don't know what they're going for, what they want to do with it. So I guess I'll just go to it. So it's not surprising that they would they would look for something 
as the, well, I guess this is what I'm going to do. I know when I was in school, when we got to our senior year, when I was in high school, when we got to our senior year, people started saying to each other, hey, what's, uh, what are you going to do after school? Oh, I got accepted to fill in the blank. And then some kids would, oh, I, I don't know. And you'd see that, that realization set in that, uh-oh, <laughs> I haven't been taking post-high school very seriously. And then over the summer, what are you doing? Oh, I'm leaving for fill-in-the-blank school in another month. What are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm working at, uh, you know, some retail store or something like that. They would know that, okay, I I don't really have a plan, and they would just kind of putter around. The default at that point, if you didn't get into school, was you would just go work some sort of retail job. Be rather low-end. Some people got it maybe a year or two down the road, said, I'm going back to school now, whether it's a technical college or, you know, a you know, to become a doctor or whatever it is. But now college is the default. It's just, well, I guess that's what I'll do unless something else comes along. What a horrible, horrible situation we've become, we've gotten ourselves into. 